The World Cup is stupid. The economics are stupid. The structure is stupid. How they pick a host country is stupid. The requirements to host the World Cup are stupid. The fact that to host the World Cup, you either have to bankrupt a country or kill 6,500 people is stupid. Just about everything related to the World Cup is stupid. And I think I have a way of fixing it. I do also want to preface this by mentioning that I do not hate the World Cup. Quite the opposite. I love the World Cup. It is the greatest sporting event on earth. It is my favorite thing after oxygen. It's the only sporting event that's actually literally brought me to tears. I look forward to the World Cup more than I do my own wedding or the birth of my first three children. If you told me I had to pick between getting an extra World Cup or ending world hunger, I'd pick world hunger, but I would think about it longer than I should. And yet I still think the World Cup is very, very stupid. And I mean that from a place of love. I want it to do better. And the first place this can happen is financially. Now, when I refer to the finances surrounding the World Cup as being stupid, I don't mean this as in the World Cup as a bad business. In fact, the World Cup is an amazing business. For FIFA, at least. Between the casting rights, marketing rights, ticket sales, and a few other miscellaneous categories, in the last World Cup, FIFA generated 5.36 billion in revenues, 3.5 billion of which they kept in profits. That's a 66% profit margin. And just to put into perspective how insane that is, Nike as a company has a profit margin of 13%. Starbucks has a profit margin of 16%, and Apple has a profit margin of 26%, meaning FIFA's profit margins from the last World Cup are more than those three companies combined. To take it a step further, the World Cup generates more profits for FIFA in the month of the tournament than Nike does selling shoes, Starbucks does selling coffee, or Apple does selling MacBooks over an entire quarter. And part of the reason for these insane margins and profits is the fact that FIFA retains little to no cost or responsibilities for actually organizing the event. They don't do any Anything. They don't develop infrastructure, build stadiums, pay for accommodations, housing, hiring workers, etc. All those fall on the host country, which is understandable. You want to host the event? Act like a host. But what's unique about the World Cup, and I put unique in air quotes, is that just about all of the money generated from the tournament is exclusive to FIFA. They don't share anything. The ticket sales, sponsorships, TV rights, even the merchandise are exclusive to FIFA, and none of it goes to the host country that spent all of this money and put in all this effort to host the tournament. From FIFA's perspective, they're doing your country a favor by even letting you host the tournament by boosting tourism. And there is some truth to that. In the 2014 World Cup, Brazil welcomed over 1 million soccer fans to come and watch the games. And that sounds like a lot until you realize there's actually a 15% drop in tourism from the previous year, meaning the World Cup actually reduced tourism. But the drop in tourism and not taking part in revenue for the tournament is nothing in comparison to the real financial burden, which is hosting the tournament. And a lot of this is because of the strict requirements FIFA has for host countries. In order for a country to host a tournament, FIFA requires 12 stadiums that each have a capacity between 40 and 80,000 seats spread throughout the country. Every stadium needs to be in a different city or region, every team and stadium needs their own training site, and each stadium must also have a large enough airport nearby, which oftentimes requires countries to either build new airports, rail lines, and other means of transportation. And each country is also required to have 72 hotels for teams and referees, as well as four hotels for fans at each stadium location. But okay, I don't actually have a problem with these requirements. They may be a little bit strict, but generally I understand them for the most part. My issue is not with FIFA's requirements, but the fact that FIFA keeps selecting countries that don't already meet these requirements and have to take on insane debt and infrastructure efforts to be able to host the tournament. Let's look at Brazil, for example, which was a total disaster from start to finish. In order to comply with FIFA stadium requirements, Brazil needed to renovate five of their existing stadiums and build seven new ones. Brazil agreed to use 12 stadiums across 12 host cities. The initial estimate for stadium cost by the organizers was 1.1 billion, but they ended up more than tripling that, running up a bill of 3.6 billion, and that's just on stadiums. The increase in cost was a result of a number of things, including poor planning, inefficiencies, and of course, corruption. From building stadiums in areas so remote that they had to ship all the parts down a river, to a crane collapse destroying part of another stadium and killing several people, to stadiums barely receiving FIFA approval until weeks before the tournament kicked off due to their suspect development, and lack of test events. Now, part of the reason so many Brazilians were initially in favor of the tournament taking place was the promise of other infrastructure projects that would have benefits extending beyond the tournament, helping the local economy and population for years to come after the event. There are examples of this as well. In preparation for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, the government spent a whopping $19 billion improving the local transportation system, including buses and trains, which are still being used today and are often referenced as a success story in how to build long-lasting infrastructure after such an event. Yo, sh shout out to South Africa, shout out to Africa. Shout out to, Af look at us, look at us. 
Look at us. Yo, Africa's really nice with it, bro. Come on, but respecting our names. Uh, I love, love claiming the success of another country that has absolutely nothing to do with my own, except for the fact that we are on the same continent. <laughs> So in an effort to replicate the success, the Brazilian government planned for 93 projects to be completed leading up to the World Cup, including roads, light rails, buses, and airport renovations. But by the end of it, only 36 of the planned 93 projects were completed, the majority of which were airport and port renovations, something that's had little to no impact on the greater economy, seeing how they couldn't be used by much of the population and instead were viewed more like vanity projects. The port renovations alone cost Brazil a whopping $7 billion. That's twice what they spent on all the stadiums and were only done because they couldn't build enough hotels in time for the tournament, so they instead opted to bring in cruise ships to host spectators and needed ports to support this. That, that's so wild to me, man. <laughs> Most of what was built for the Brazil World Cup, the stadiums, the roads, have all gone unused. Many of them have been placed in impoverished areas, areas that have long needed government assistance and were instead ignored. Schools, public transit, and housing were all forgone in exchange for a soccer tournament. Not only were impoverished communities neglected, many of them were displaced. It was estimated that somewhere between 10 to 20 indigenous tribes were at least partially evicted from their land in order to complete many of these projects. But there may never be a country with as much blood on its hands as Qatar, who in their preparation for the World Cup killed over 6,500 workers. And I do mean killed. These are deaths that are 100% their own doing. If over the course of a decade you've taken no safety measures, no precautions, and no responsibility for the people you forcefully brought and kept into your own country to build these stadiums and cities, resulting in more deaths than two 9-11s, then yes, you killed those people. And this isn't Qatar's only sin. Far from it. In the decade plus since Qatar was awarded the right to host the World Cup, exploitation and abuse of these workers has been rampant, with workers exposed to forced labor, unpaid wages, excessive working hours, unethical recruiting practices, and without the ability ability to leave the country until their employers allowed them to. Millions of people brought to a country, overworked, unpaid, and unable to go back home. Sounds familiar. This again was a result of FIFA selecting a country that didn't have infrastructure already in place to meet their stringent requirements. What I mean by this is regardless of how rich a country is, it's still a bad idea to select a country without the infrastructure already built, even if it's fraught with resources and cash like Qatar, who spent $220 billion on the tournament. Just to put that into perspective, $220 billion is more than the GDP of 160 nations or 75% of the countries on this earth, and they spent it on a month-long soccer tournament. And even with all this money and resources, this still put millions of people in slave-like conditions. So what's the solution? Well, it's simple. Stop awarding the World Cup to any country that doesn't already have the infrastructure in place to support the tournament. There should be no bid accepted by any country that doesn't already meet the requirements because time and again, we've seen this cause immense damage to economies and immense damage to societies within these host countries. We've already seen some precedent here with the 2026 World Cup, technically shared across the US, Canada, and Mexico, but in reality, it's just the US World Cup with a few games sprinkled across their neighbors. Dudes were handed out games like Costco samples. But through this World Cup, there is already infrastructure in place such that nothing needs to be added. You have enough stadiums, accommodations, hotels, transit, such that nothing really needs to be built. There is very little, if any, cost to the United States. Mind you, it's been 28 years since the last World Cup was held in the US, but even then it only cost the country 500 million in total to host the event. Even after adjusting for inflation, this comes out to less than half a percent of what Qatar spent to host the tournament. Now, obviously the issue becomes that there are not enough countries like the US that can hold a tournament of this status without building necessary infrastructure first. Should those countries be stopped from ever hosting a World Cup? And my answer to that is, yeah. They shouldn't host it. Why are we killing people and putting their countries in insane debt for a soccer tournament? I hate to minimize something I love so much, but I genuinely mean that. Brazil went through one of its worst recessions in history the years immediately following the World Cup. The World Cup was in 2014, the recession started in 2015. Not a result of them hosting the tournament, there were many other issues already happening with their economy, but blowing billions of dollars on the event and then again a few years later on the Olympics definitely didn't 
help. But I'm also a firm believer that the World Cup should be the world's game. I, I think it should be a shared experience for the entire globe. I just think we need to be more thoughtful in our approach. For example, I know there is no African country that can reasonably support the World Cup without taking on an insane amount of infrastructure projects to meet FIFA's requirements. Morocco tried to do this, nearly winning the bid for the 2026 tournament over the US, but having done so would have required them to commit the same sins as nearly every host prior to them, including building seven new stadiums. But what if instead of making the tournament exclusive to Morocco, you made it a North African tournament, a shared experience across the region? Let's say instead of doing the 2030 tournament in just Morocco, we did it in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Egypt. Morocco has six stadiums that already meet FIFA's capacity requirements. Algeria has five, Tunisia has three, and Egypt has another three, including one which exceeds FIFA's 80,000 capacity requirement to host the World Cup final. Even Libya, where my family is from, has a stadium with over 65,000 seats, but I understand why you might want to hold off on that for now. Regardless, there are 18 stadiums, four more than FIFA's requirement, across North Africa with enough seating to support such a tournament. There are also enough local clubs in each of the countries to support base camps for each team, and all of the countries have more than enough accommodations and hotels in place to handle the influx of tourists, given they are tourist destinations. And this is actually something that's been discussed already by the UNAF, the Union of North African Football, though the only formal bid right now in Africa is from Morocco. There are actually four bids confirmed for the 2030 World Cup. Morocco, a joint bid from Uruguay, Argentina, Paraguay, and Chile, another joint bid from Spain and Portugal, as well as a joint bid from Egypt, Greece, and Saudi Arabia. The bid from Uruguay, Argentina, Paraguay, and Chile is the most popular bid currently, given it would mark the 100 year anniversary of when the first World Cup took place in Uruguay. Now between these four countries, there are already 18 stadiums which have enough capacity to meet the lower end of FIFA's capacity requirement, though there are still a few issues with this. First, most of these stadiums are in either one or two cities across each country, more than half of them in Buenos Aires. Second is while most of these stadiums meet FIFA's 40K requirement for hosting group stage games, most of these stadiums do not meet the increasing requirements for later stage games and none have enough capacity to host the final, which requires 80,000 seats. The Egypt, Greece, and Saudi Arabia bid likely won't fly because it includes a country from the same region as Qatar, and FIFA requires at least two World Cups to pass before another country from the same region can host another tournament. Meaning as of now, the Spain and Portugal World Cup makes the most sense seeing how they have not only the infrastructure in place, but the transportation and hospitality infrastructure as well. These are countries well seasoned to handle large influxes of tourists and have more than enough public transportation, hotels, and training grounds to host the tournament without requiring much else. As a homer, I think it would be cool to see the World Cup in my home region of North Africa, in a region it's never been before, in a place with some of the best soccer teams and soccer fans in the world. And the best part is, whether it's in Spain or whether it's in North Africa, no one has to die. And if they do pick North Africa, that means one of the most amazing regions in the world gets to play host to the most amazing event on earth. And I don't think that's stupid at all. Far from it. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for making it through another video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. We're still building this up and any support we can get is greatly, greatly appreciated. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Love y'all. Peace.